Partnerem tohoto vydání podcastu Spartanské noviny je Football Club, magazín pro fotbalovou kulturu. Vážené Spartanky, vážení Spartané, vítám vás u našeho dalšího dílu podcastu Spartanských novin. Dnes s naším speciálním hostem jsou Lemmy Volkam, Mr. Brian Priske. Thank you very much. A chtěl bych zmínit pár věcí na, na úvod. Prvním děkujeme našemu sponzorovi, kterým je Football Club. Je to takový pěkný čtvrtletní pro fotbalovou kulturu. A naši fanoušci ji můžou zakupovat s, se slevovým kódem ACS ve výši 15%. Jako další bych chtěl poděkovat Oldovi Heilichovi, který, kterému patří toto, toto krásné studio Loud and Clear v Praze na Vinohradech. A dále bych určitě chtěl poděkovat i Pražské Spartě, jmenovitě pak Ondrovi Kasíkovi za to, že uskutečnil tento, tento podcast, de facto by se dalo říci. A na závěr bych chtěl zmínit i novinku, kterou jsme pro vás připravili a tou je platforma Hero Hero, na které nás můžete odebírat. A v podstatě se tam dovíte víc, po případě se koukněte na stránky spartanských novin, spartanskénoviny.cz. So I will switch to the English right now. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> so the only the only time we mentioned you by name was in the introduction. <laughs> so we're not lying to you. No problem. No problem. Okay. Um, so let's start with something quite easy. How do you feel at Sparta right now? Overall, I feel good. Uh, overall, I I have a really good feeling when I'm at the club, when I'm in in the city as well. Uh, so overall, my life is is quite good. Of course, I'm here to. Um, to do a job and I'm here to perform like the rest of the of the club and, and of course the last uh, weeks with uh, a lot of draws in a row uh, of course uh, changed the spirit the mood a little bit but overall I'm, I'm really happy I'm satisfied with the people I'm working with at the club um, and, uh, and and I'm trying to enjoy life as well mm -hmm. when you announce as a coach uh, basically even among us when we talked about it was like Uh, it was like positive surprise like we didn't know you by name we didn't know you at all because there are like hundreds of coaches uh what did you read the reactions on the social networks were you surprised or what was your i have to be honest and say i i, I know i'm on social media i also use instagram but uh unfortunately i, I never read the the comments um i think it's uh it's a it's a working habit that i i, I took along during the years because as a, as a coach or as a player who are in in the public spotlights um, you can also be affected by the the comments on on social media and normally when it's good things then it, of course it's nice to read it but uh, often there's also a lot of bad stuff going on at, at the social media so i actually decided uh, not to read uh, all the comments uh, throughout the, the many years and just keep my focus on trying to to uh, give people an insight in how I see the games and also what I'm doing in my life. And then whatever they say is, is up to them. I don't really read it, un unfortunately. We touched the same subject with Forte and Yardazelani when they were the guests on our podcasts. Uh, do you recommend them the same if they are affected by any means by the social media? Well, I think if they ask me, I would I would definitely uh, tell them to be really strong if they read the comments uh, on social media and also just in general. Um, Because if things are going really well, people have a tendency also to lift people up and you suddenly feel like you're the best in the whole world and, and you maybe lose your focus. And it's a little bit the same when it's negative comments or a negative periods, then you will maybe lose your, your confidence as well. So if you read it, and I, I don't uh, I don't mind which direction people go, but if you re decide to read them, then I think you need to have a strong character and not to be affected by a lot of the comments that are coming because uh, we also have to admit we live in a world today where there's a lot of thoughts a lot of comments from a lot of people who don't know a lot they, they don't know anything they just see sundays or saturdays results and that's that's it uh so you have to be really strong as a public character to to decide to read the the messages uh, coming in because it can hurt you a lot for sure because we're also human beings uh, just like uh, everybody else and have our own emotions and can get hurt as well yeah. So I think it's important uh, as a professional to try to keep the focus on what matters. And that is my own opinion, the people close to me, their opinion, and and not to be affected by the opinions from a lot of people outside who doesn't see, you know, the daily work. Is it, is it difficult to work with player psychology these days in this world, as you said? Um, difficult is, uh, I'm not sure it's the right word, but it's a challenge for no. sure. Uh, I think it's, a, it's an important tool as a coach today to, um, to work with the, with the mental state of the players as well. 
Uh, I've been lucky to work with a couple of mental coaches uh, during the years uh, as well. And um, and it's a good impact on the players because they the pressure they are on nowadays is completely different to when I used to play. So I think it's an important tool in the daily work with the players, uh, not just to help them mentally, but also just to be part of their life as well and, and try to give them the support they, they also need. Yeah, one of the questions we got asked a lot is like, how do you try to keep uh, the right mood in the team, basically? Like when the results are not great, as were in the last weeks, uh, how do you try to keep like team in a mental shape? What are you doing? Because this was the, with the previous coaches, which were not foreigners, this was a problem that the team was mentally fragile. Mm. Well, I think it's, uh, when you're a Sparta, you know you, you need to win. Uh, that is the simple fact uh, that's the expectations in the club uh, i try to tell them that uh, we cannot control the results you know we can control all our performances the work that we're putting in the effort that we're putting in then we cannot control the results we have a uh, an impact of hopefully pushing the performances into the results that we want but like for example the game we played saturday i hope you guys agree with me that when our opponent has one attempt on goal and almost no ball possession and it ends up with a draw, then sometimes you are also unlucky and you don't get the results that you actually deserve because I think our boys deserve to get the win. They showed a good effort, they showed a good mentality, but at the end, on the day, we didn't have that last bit of luck that we also need sometimes. And then that's why I said the result, I cannot control it. We cannot control a guy from Banik, he shoots from 20, 23 meters and it goes into the net but I can control the players to work hard, to perform on the grass, run the meters that they have to fight, go in the jaws, try to score some goals. And that is the most important thing in phases like the one we're in now with the five draws in a row, no wins, that they keep the focus on the daily job, continue coming in every morning at Strahov, focus on what they need to do physically, technically and tactically. And that's the most important thing. Then you will feel success during these sessions. And then hopefully you will bring it into the weekend's uh, game. And then sometimes we um, we run in a streak uh, like this one, where we, we don't push the margins to our side. Because I think out of the five games we played, we for sure should have won four of them. Maybe, maybe one thing uh, that hasn't been mentioned yet right now during the discussion. Uh, when we conceded the goal against Banik, Was there any particular thing that you could uh, do during the match, you know, at well, the moment? Yeah, well, I think if you look at the image, um, then my from my point of view, there's always something that you could have done overall. And when I look at it, there's a couple of players who's involved in the situation where when we really look at it and look at the small details, they could have done differently. But I'm also a, a type and a person and a coach who look at the situation and say if i put this situation 100 times again it, this will never happen because it, it is so small coincidences and again they shoot from 22 meter we have four players between the ball and the goal and yet it goes in but of course there's a goalkeeper that you would like that he could take it Sally is there as well i think uh, danny is also one who could clear it longer so there's small elements in the game But for some reason, I feel that the boys are getting punished a lot harder than they actually should. I was more angry with the two goals we conceded uh, in um, in Teplice, mm -hmm. from a tactical perspective. Uh, from our perspective, from the stands, it's like we see that after you conceded the goal, and also the statistics show you this, that the performance basically was way worse than in the first half. Was it a result of like mental state of the players or what was behind that? Because In the last five games, we saw that there were like certain parts of the match when the performance was not as great. Well, I think it's uh, like I said, in the status we're in right now with, with four games before this one that we, we didn't get a win. Then we actually played a, a good first half, except that the last five minutes of, mm. the, of the first half. Then we concede really quick after the break. Uh, not a lucky punch, but it felt like a little bit lucky punch out of nothing. They, they got the goal. And then we knew again, okay, we have to face another wall of defenders and a defensive shape from the opponent. It's so difficult to break them down. Um, and that's that's my, my biggest uh, concern at the moment. The biggest challenge that we have is to break down opponents who are really low. Because the minute Bani got the goal, they parked the bus and had eight players in the 16. Then we felt difficult to really open them up. 
and and that's what we're searching at the moment to find the right tools to uh, to break down low organization opponents mm -hmm. and well, then of course there's some mental in it also it's a big blow coming out and we're actually been on top of the game and then suddenly it's one one but i think in, in some aspects i think they they responded really well we quickly got a set piece we quickly put them under pressure but we struggled creating the really really big big chances the next match uh, after the international break is going to be against Radetz Karl, which is well known due to their coach. You already know what I'm going to ask. Yeah. Uh, they are well known for their, they are well organized at the back. Sparta didn't beat them at home during like the after after season. Mm -hmm. Basically, if you can, like as much as uh, what can you tell? What will you switch? Do you have like any idea? What will you do differently? Well, I think I've. I got a lot of ideas and, and also the staff and the players got a lot of ideas, but, but as I said, overall, um, what I see in the games, uh, it is small things that will, will help us getting the wins. Uh, I don't think we should uh, change uh, dramatically. I see a lot of good things in, in our game, but I hope also with your experience in football and watching a lot of games, not just in the Czech Republic, but also just international football, the, diff the, the most difficult part in football is to break down organizations who are really low. And now we played five games in a row and almost nine games the whole season against teams who not pack the bus, but it's really, really close. Second half, again, against Panic, 70% ball possession. Opponents who don't want the ball every time they get it, they go along. So that is our challenge. And we have to find the right weapon individually. The players, that's also what I'm telling them, especially offensive ones, they have to do better individually and they also have to do better together because you need the good connections between players. One is maybe running deep and one is maybe dropping so you can use each other's uh, qualities. And that is what I also feel is our challenge at the moment with uh, too many new signings in the lineup already. That was definitely not the purpose when, when I arrived. And also in the beginning of the season, we were not hoping to see too many new signings in the lineup because you will miss some automatisms, you will miss some connection between the players and due to the injuries of uh, Krejci, due to the injuries of Pesha and Julo, Kuchta out for five weeks and then also the, the sell of uh, Hansi, mm -hmm. then we suddenly had to put in the new signings a little bit too quick in some aspects and then you lose some rhythm that the players actually had from last season or the seasons before. So basically you're looking for like in upcoming weeks to like get all the chemistry all the automatism so like basically you can do like no look pass and everything that's connected needs time something like this yes i think it's it's my biggest uh, experience in, in football you you cannot force things when you're such a new team and it's it's not a, an excuse it is something that we're working on every day every day at, at staff trying to to get the players to connect even better on the training ground um we have an amazing team, some really, really good boys who are very professional. It's it's the best group I ever worked with when it comes to the discipline, uh, how they treat each other, how they work and stuff. It, it, it's really, really a pleasure working with them. Um, but they need a little bit of time to understand each other and know each other even more. And that is time we don't have. And that is why we also try to push them individually that they need to show even more when they come into staff and on the training pitch that we cannot waste time. We cannot have one day of a bad session. Everybody has to perform every time we train. And that's also why I like to keep the sessions quite short. It's it's maximum 80 minutes. Uh, and some of the sessions are only one hour. Uh, so we cannot waste seconds or minutes on players not performing on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, because it is crucial for us on the Saturday. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, maybe I would like to ask uh, if the efficiency, the striking efficiency, is something what we are currently missing. Yeah, yeah, it, uh, it's for sure. It's a fact. We, we, we have to admit it. We had a decent amount of chances. Uh, if we look at the data behind the games, then we, um, we have enough XG to win the games. We uh, have enough box entries to win the games as well. Um, but there are two things in that element is one thing is I don't think we play the chances big enough. We have bigger possibilities to make the chances even bigger. And then the second thing is to have the efficiency in the right timing. If we look at Chauncey's uh, finish in minute 85, 
we have to be honest, and he knows it also. It it, it has to be uh, it has to be a goal in in a lot of aspects, and especially the period we're in, we're depending on situations like these ending up in in a goal. And it's not to blame Chauncey or whatever, because he's he's doing his absolute best like the, the rest of them. But the big chances we get, we need to kill them, and we need to to take them. Uh, how much did the team got hurt by the five five match suspension of Honza Kuchta? Um, it's difficult to say how much because we also won okay. some games in between. Uh, I think actually we won uh, three of them, if I if I remember correctly. Um, so it had an impact on him, for sure, because he uh, he didn't play for five weeks, and it's difficult for uh, a player to lo- uh, to um, to miss uh, the game rhythm. Kukta for sure is a is an important player for us, and and we know his qualities, but he struggled in the weeks that he was out. Um, so of course we we missed his quality, but at the same time we picked up some points, and and I think him and and Chanti will be even better together in the coming weeks. But um, like I said, it all takes time for new players to adapt the the, the style of play in Sparta and the pressure in in Sparta as well. But for sure, Kukta should be one of them who could uh, who could handle it. Yeah, my colleague wanted to ask. He didn't ask anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I will. I will ask you to, uh, about the Banik because you because you mentioned um, Banik had on the one one shot on the on on the target. And do you think this is the typical this is the typical uh, scenario for 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 Czech League? Because because I think that's the typical for Czech League. You know, you can you can have uh, 20, 20 strike. Uh, I'm sorry, twenty shots on on the target, and your opponent had uh, only one only one shot, and still you you got to you got to um, I don't know lose or something. So do you think that's the typical for Czech League? And how how do you work with 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 this with this typical I don't know thing for yeah. Czech well, League? You know? I, I think it's difficult for me to say if it's typical in in the Czech League. I think actually when I watch a lot of the games during the weekend, I see uh, some some open games where there's a lot of things going on. It's it's quite physical in many aspects. There's a lot of counters also. Mm. Um, but I think it's it's a good league and there's some good things uh, for one reason, of course, and that's the main reason for me is to look at our games. And at the moment, I, I see a pattern that the opponents are going really low, giving us the ball, and 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 then it's up to us to um, to dominate the games. Uh, if we compare to last season, uh, of course, I haven't watched all the games, but if you look at the data which is mm. available, then uh, last season you had around 55% ball possession. And already now nine games later in the new season, we had 10% more, around 65, 66. For some reason, I don't know why we suddenly have the ball 10% more, because that is actually not the the purpose. But we have the ball a lot, and the opponent are defending really low and trying to hurt us on counters. Hmm. Um, so it is, of course, a, a pattern that was also present last season. In a lot of your games, you also considered a lot of goals on on counters. Um, but I don't know if it's a pattern that opponents only have one attempt on goal. Uh, it shouldn't be. Uh, but if they do, then I think I would be quite happy if we could keep opponents on one target uh, or one shot per game. Then I would be amazed. I already think now we've done a good job um, in two aspects out of three aspects that I really wanted to change when I came. First thing was the physical part. I felt that we lacked some intensity in the games that I saw. That was the main objective when we came in was to train uh, better and harder and more intense and also to get that product into the games and already now we are uh, more intense than last season uh, when we look at uh, the running data from all the games compared to last season we we really added a bigger engine to the players which i think in modern football is important also in the czech league and i know long term it will help us win uh, a lot of games Uh, so already there, we we are performing uh, around I don't know twenty twenty five percent better on high speed runs and also sprint meters compared to last season. That tells me that we're more intense. We are running more in the games. We are dominating the games as well. Mm. And then the the second thing is uh, the defensive shape. We conceded way too many goals the last three to five seasons uh, in the Czech league. Uh, Sparta conceded between I think it was thirty five and forty five goals in the last seasons and if you compare to the champions of czech republic then it's almost double the goals conceded when pilsen won the championship when slavia won the championship it was way less goals against so if we want to be successful 
and not just to be successful but also to win the championship that everybody is is uh, dying for then we need to improve our defensive work and already now in these nine games we're conceding less chances against less xg against less less attempts uh, against as well and also less goals so that is giving me uh, not just a hope but also uh, a good feeling that we're on the right uh, right way. Mm -hmm. Then the issue is offensively that we have to improve and we have to do it quick. Dinko, you wanted to ask something? Yeah, uh, a lot of teams want to play uh, part of Bas uh, against Sparta. Um, do you think we need we have to be more more creative in in the pitch on yeah. the pitch? No, for sure. That, that is one of the issues. That's that's also why I said it, it hurts us a bit that Pesha is out and Schuler has been out. Uh, two, I think, creative players who can score goals and also make assists. Uh, Daniel has been playing really, really well for us, but he's still a young player coming in, but has actually done a good job. And and there's no doubt that we've been struggling finding the right formula against the 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 teams that uh, that are really low and then. At the end, uh, I also have to be honest, and, I, and the five games we played now as a draw, it is small details where we are really been hurt, and some of the, the goals we conceded, like I said, uh, hurts me even more because it is goals that we should not have conceded. Uh, I have a question. So there are like for me, there are like two explanations for like why the teams are parking the bus so much. The first one is they can be scared of your place of Sparta, which should be you should be flattered by. The second explanation provided the Zlin's coach Jelinek, and he said it's really easy to prepare for Sparta and for your playing style. So, what's your perspective on this? I th I think in some aspects he's he's right, but if your approach already is to be defensive and wait for counters, then it's easy to say that our playing style is is easy to read. I think it is. In some aspects, it's easy to read, and yet it, it is also difficult. Um, but we try to dominate. We 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 try to play through the lines. We try to to find the right patterns. Um, we struggled in some games to get behind the opponents because of their low organization. That is a tool for us that we need to to uh, to do better. Uh, but I take all the the input that I can get, and I also heard the the coach said this from from Slin. I think it's. It's an easy one to say uh, from the outside uh, and from his perspective, because the easiest part in football it is to park the bus, wait for the counters, and and go really fast. You have tons of space in front of you every time you win the ball. Every time our players have the ball, they look at nine, ten players who are low. And when you look at the images from Banik, second half, the last thirty-five minutes, there are eight players in the sixteen the whole time. Then it is difficult to create really good patterns that can open this up. We try, we practice every every week to give the players these tools and then we always come back. It is also the individual quality of the players in the right moments to make the right decisions together with the second player uh, linking up and creating an overload on, on, on some aspects. Shouldn't we develop some kind of plan B? during the match yeah no Did no we it earlier yeah no it is, it's true uh, we we also talk about it at, at the uh, at the training ground um the last couple of games we've been leading and and yet uh, dropping points so that is uh, of course also a concern for me that we actually done well and we opened up the opponent early in the games and and should have given us a benefit uh that's also why i was even more uh disappointed against the temperature that we could not control the game with a 2-0 lead also in the weekend with the one zero lead against a very defensive team we should have been able to to kill it but as i said small things small details in the defensive game ends up with a goal against us and that is what we what we have to try to eliminate the players have to be even more focused in in all these small situations but i said it already when 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 i see that players are putting in a lot of effort and also the data behind the games is showing that we are doing enough to win the games then i know with the experience i have in football that it, it will be a matter of time before we push the margins on our side it doesn't mean that we in the meantime are not working on plan b or the individual quality of the players we that is our job and and it is my job to make sure that we got a b and c plans ready to uh, to win the games so in your perspective we need just like something to click it a little bit of luck uh no I, I i don't like luck i don't like luck but sometimes you need it in in some aspects but i see like i said i, I see good things uh if we if we take the game again banning we we are leading one zero and we got a 
an attempt on their uh, crossbar, uh, almost an open goal from from Sully. If he kicks it in, it's two zero. The game is over uh, right after the crossbar. There's the two other players who's got big chances to to kill the game. So it is. It's not luck, but it's details, and it's it's the last quality of the players, and it is why I keep coming back. It's their responsibility, their job to push their quality every uh, day that they're in the training ground. If it's just one percent, then maybe it's that percent in the weekend that will help us for them to make the right decision and make the right choice. Zdenku, we've been discussing in the meanwhile something about the mental strength of the players. I think we should move this discussion strictly to uh, coach Brian yeah. and uh, maybe maybe the, the best question right now is uh, whether whether is coach making some of his habits yeah. uh, to get rid of mental strength am yeah. I right I think that's a really nice topic so I would like to I would like to ask you uh, what gives you mental strength uh, when your team is down it's especially during this uh, this five uh, five last games so what do you do how do you prefer uh, i'm sorry prepare or what's what's your what's your key i try i try to um, first of all to stay positive um, and then i think uh, if you read some some books or some some um, articles regarding um, how the brain works then then you will also realize if you are part of a uh, winning mentality and a winning environment then the biggest challenge is when things are going wrong so when things are actually going wrong then the 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 strong people the strong characters they see it as a challenge and not a problem but they when they every time they don't succeed they get angry and they use the anger into a positive thing so when we're training on the training pitch and if I make a, an easy drill, I will quickly realize that players, they lose the interest because it's too easy. And it's a little bit the same principle now when we're losing, Inst or not losing, but losing points. Instead of just focusing on the result and the bad feeling that it will give you, because it gives all of us a bad feeling. We didn't win, we should have won. Now it's five games in a row, we, we play a draw. Then I have a bad feeling. But instead of looking at the feeling, then I will use the anger, the the frustration into a positive uh, feeling of I want to change things. I want to do better. Uh, so I try to make them see that it is a challenge and not a problem. And when it's a challenge, then you get motivated. I, I That's how I work. So when I see a challenge now with five games in a, in, in a row with a draw, then I get I get really angry and wanting to solve this quick as possible. That gives me fuel, it gives me energy to try to work on something that is not working. And that is also what I try to bring along to the players, because it's easy for us if we focus on the result. You feel bad, you feel shit, you maybe listen to some some supporters or whatever, and it will only make it worse, and you will definitely not perform. So look at the challenges ahead. That is how I, I, I approach this, uh, this period. Uh, do you have... I don't know some stereotype uh, things every single day you do I don't know uh, in the morning you go to the gym or something because I go to the gym yeah the no gym it's, in the it's and it helps me to yeah no it, I think it's it's a good uh, it's a good point I think it's important uh, not just in football but overall in life that you as a person you bring in some good habits that will give you a good feeling uh, and feeling of success straight away. So just uh, when you get up in the morning to, to make your bet, you already done one good thing. You already had success in one thing. Going to the gym in the morning will also give you a good feeling that you're doing something something wrong. So I, I totally agree with you. It's important to have some good habits. For me, it, it, is, uh, it is quite simple. Uh, sleep is important for me. Uh, I don't stay awake all night uh, watching football, watching Netflix or whatever. I go to bed 10.30 and then I get up at 6.15 and take my shower and then I go to Starhof. Sometimes I, I go in the, in the cryo chamber at the, at the Starhof and, and just to have three minutes on my own with her in the freezer and then, then I'm ready to go. But that is that is the only thing that I would say that I that I do. I, I keep a strict rhythm in my in my week with enough sleep, seven, eight hours of sleep which I know is important for me. I need it 
to be 100% focused uh, and I, I live really fine with it. I don't go out in the evenings uh, to a lot of restaurants uh, throughout the whole week. Maybe once I, I go out to get some food, but otherwise I don't hang around uh, late in the evening. Um, so try to keep it quite simple. Sleep is, is for sure important. And then for a long time, I've been using uh, mindfulness as a, as a tool also to re reduce some of the stress that I also have, uh, not just from football, but also just from my life. Uh, of course, I miss my family also. They, they don't live with me. So so sometimes I also create some kind of stress in, in my mind as well. And there I use mindfulness um, over the last probably three or four years. And it, I have to say it, it helped me a lot in, in, in keeping my brain cool and keeping my brain working at a, at a decent level. Uh, I have a question regarding the negative emotions. How do you work with the negative emotions from the fans? I'm like, they even throw the pyrotechnics at the team for the last, at the last, at the last match. How yeah. do you work with this? Um, I live with it. I know it's part of football. I, I've been in football for 20, 25 years, maybe. So I know it's, it's the, it's the usual reaction from, from supporters to show that they are not happy. Uh, I don't like it, of course, uh, but I know it's, it, it is usual and, and that it can happen. And that's, that's how it is as a, as a player or a staff member or a coach, you have to live with it and you have to accept it. You have to accept the emotions that, uh, that they have. And, and that is, that is how it is. Um, I, I try not to think too much about it. And I try to take it positive that they really want us to have success so much. So again, I try to turn it around and not to focus too much on them being not happy with me or with us. After the final whistle, there were like some fans really rude at you. Then Chuanchi and the one other player took you back. If you don't mind, could you tell us what did they tell you? I, I don't know what they told me, but mm -hmm. one of them uh, showed that he wanted me to come. And mm -hmm. I don't mind. I, I know also Andre mm -hmm. sitting here and he, he knows me already also that I don't mind talking to fans mm -hmm. or whatever. So of course I went there and um, I think actually the one who called me down was, was in some aspects quite calm, but quickly some other ones came around and, and they were quite negative. And of course I didn't understand what they were saying, but I have a good feeling of what they were telling me. Um, and you served a finger. <laughs> yeah, there was, <laughs> uh, there was a couple of fingers, yeah. But that's how it is. Uh, for me, it's just important to send the signal to the fans that I respect them. That is That is the most important thing for me, that I respect them and I respect their uh, comments or whatever. But at the same time, I also want them to think about their reactions towards me and the players f when we come to them. And we also want to show them the respect of coming even with a loss. It is not nice for me or for the players to go and stand up in front of them, but we want to show them the respect that we really appreciate their support. And uh, that, that's, that is also one of the reasons that I go there sometimes to show them the respect. But then, as I said, I also expect it to go towards me and at least at least to um, uh, that it doesn't get too emotional. Because again, I hope you guys agree with me. We deserve to win the game. We 100%, you cannot argue against it. I hope not. We deserve to win the game. But when you look at only the result, then I understand all the emotions and everything. But it is my job to stay calm not just to focus on the result because then we're fucked the bad thing is that the emotions of the fans is affected most of all by the result yeah exactly I, and i know that and that's why i said okay i don't mind if people if we played like shit, sorry then mm -hmm. then i would be feeling really really bad then i would struggle we can still improve our game and that uh, i hope also the listeners they hear me talking now i am not satisfied with how we play over 90 minutes there are good periods during the games we have to improve it and we have to do it fast and we're working on it every day. But yet these nine games, we played enough good minutes to win the games as well. But small things, small details, for some reason, it's not there yet. And that is my job to get that on our side quick as possible. Is there anything you would like to say to the supporters who will listen? Uh, the next time they will feel all these negative emotions when we don't win and they would like try to like say some like bad things to you do you want to like, say yes i i think it's difficult uh i i hope they keep in mind that they look at the effort on the pitch and they look at the performance on the pitch and uh, not always just on the results the result is easy to look at then we all get frustrated because we're in sparta and you guys deserve to get this championship you've been behind the club for so long you haven't got the championship that you guys deserve so i understand the the emotions but i hope that they will We'll look at what's going on at the pitch. 
and that would sometimes make me it's not often that i'm angry but i get angry when i don't feel that things are fair and when people attack my players uh when it comes to their effort then i go angry because i look nine games where i see our players are performing really well they've been running they've been fighting they've been going in duels they've been doing everything that you expect from them when it comes to the physical aspect of the game and yet i hear people say you have to fight for the shirt you have to fight for sparta you have to run for sparta you have to go in the jewels for sparta but they are doing that but we are not winning for sparta and that is a big difference for me winning and showing the effort that you guys expect you want to see blood sweat and tears for the players i think they're doing it also saturday they were running fighting more than almost ever it's our second best performance physically in the whole season then it sends me a signal that they are actually performing but not winning, that is, that is not the same. There was one thing, one sentence that caught my eye was like that you can't change the past, but you are here to change the future. Can yeah, you? yeah, no, exactly. I, I cannot take away your pain that you had for eight years. I can feel it for sure. I feel it every day when I come at Letna, when I come at, at Strahov, when I meet you guys, uh, people in the city, I, f I feel your pain for, for the last eight years, but I, I can't take it away. I, I can try to to push us in the direction of giving us that championship that we want. And that is one of the reasons that I'm here, that is to to be successful. And I know I cannot do it with a snap with my fingers. It, it takes some time. I'm hoping that it will come quick. And now this season, that's also why I said I'm happy that we already made a really good foundation when it comes to the physical aspect of the game and the defensive aspect of the game. If we can keep those two components, components then I know that we are able to compete with the uh, with the ones who at the moment uh, are getting more points with us but it, it takes a little bit of time but you cannot uh, yeah you, you cannot force things you need the right foundation to be successful and for some reason when i look at you from the outside and also now with my experience these months then the foundation has not been solid enough to be champions okay um as you said uh there have been five draws in a row which is such a sudden streak i yeah. would say but you also said that we are performing better than before in general are there any mutual uh reasons why are there uh, five draws in a row or anything what can be linked through all the five matches um i i think we already talked a bit about it that it's mainly the offensive play mm -hmm. It's mainly our offensive uh, ability to create chances uh, and make them big enough and also the coolness and the quality to uh, to kill the chances when we get them because i think if i think back on uh, bohemians slin chaplonich uh, teplica and now also uh, in the weekend against panic we had chances to to win the games I know we also um, received, especially Jablonic and also Slin, big counter chances against, um, where we could have lost the games as well. But I think the main thing is the offensive structure that we we missed the, the quality, we missed the connection between the players. We need, um, yeah, the last bit of automatism in in that game, and that is what we're working on defensive shape we we look at it almost every week and we're still talking a lot about <clears throat> sorry the um the transitions against we have to do better uh we have to be really good organized in the rest defense so when we attack we're still good organized to win the ball when it's uh being cleared by the the opponents um but the numbers are good defensively very few chances against very low xg against uh, one of the best teams in the league when it comes to this so for me it's not the issue it is an important issue that we have to keep structure discipline the whole season but the offensive play is where we have to do better and there's not one single day where we're not discussing is it two strikers is it a 10 is it uh, the diamond of which we tried also what is it there's there's no question there we're, we're struggling um some of it is like i said also due to the uh, the injuries of pesha shulo mm -hmm. and also kraichi mm -hmm. and kukta out for five weeks uh yulda has been out uh, also um, a couple of weeks so we've been a little bit unfortunate on the offensive positions in some in some uh, degree as well which has an impact from my point of view on the offensive play as well it's not an excuse uh it's just a fact 
Um, and then, as I said, the small details has also decided that we only got one point instead of three points. Uh, you've just mentioned the formations, the switches yeah. we've made the last matches. Uh, can we expect another change in the next match? Or is it something what you think about that is wrong right now? Um, or are you sure? Yeah, no, I, I, I don't think it's wrong. Uh, the 4-4-2 and with the two strikers, I don't think it's wrong. Uh, it also helped us in a lot of games where we, we didn't play with two strikers in the beginning. If we look at, uh, at Boleslav, for example, uh, if you remember, we played with a, a 4-3-3. But second half, we changed it, played with two strikers, Julius and Chonchera, and played really, really good. Uh, where else? Uh, there was another game also where we changed and played with two, uh, two strikers during the game. So I think that's what we're struggling with at the moment. Uh, not finding the right formation, but finding the right set of players on the pitch with the right connections with each other. Because if you look at it, the back four, I will never change it. We, uh, For me, we will always play with the back four. Then the rest of the six positions is uh, can vary it, whether it's a 4-4-2, it's a diamond, it's a 4-3-3. But when you look at all the positions throughout the nine games we played, when you look at the offensive uh, positions, it is almost the same. It does not change a lot whether it's a diamond or it's a 4-3-3 or 4-4-2. The positions that we take is almost the same. So for me, it's more uh, a matter of the individual players that we have present on the uh, on the pitch. So uh, after the Banik match, you asked the Czech journalists uh, what's their main impact from the game, which was quite unusual for mm -hmm. a coach. Yeah. And they told you, as far as I read, because I, I haven't been at the press conference, that they think that the biggest problem is the cooperation between Chuancha and Kuchta. Yeah. One of them. One of them said that. Yes. Yep. Uh, yeah. What do you think about this? I think it's an interesting perspective. Um, there's no doubt that uh, I and we also discussed it. If they are a good match, um, if you look at them separately, and also when you put them together just by the numbers, then I think they would be a fantastic couple. A smaller one, which is uh, movable, Chancheta, who's big, strong, but can also run. He can also run behind. He can also drop. Uh, I think they have all the possibilities to complement each other really, really well. And who doesn't want two of the best strikers in the league on the team playing every time? I think any coach you would often pick those two, who for me are one of the best, some of the best strikers in the in the Czech league. Um, then we could argue: Are they complementing each other well enough? at the moment that is for sure also what i'm thinking uh, at the at the moment okay uh, i will switch to one another top one of mm -hmm. our topics uh, which we have right here right there uh, it's one of the element you brought uh, to sparta it's been discussed uh, among all the fans not only the spartans but all the fans in the czech republic and it is the after match circle uh, between all the players is it something what was like spontaneous or was your plan to bring it? Um, it's 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 something completely new for me. Mm -hmm. um, at the end, it was not spontaneous, but after Viking, after the two Viking games, uh, was probably when I realized uh, the first time uh, the, the impact that uh, the pressure on the players had. I felt a group of players who were not just uh, disappointed, they were also sad. Uh, they felt ashamed of crashing out of Europe. Uh, they, for some, uh, in some degree, they felt uh, split as a group also. Some players went to the fans after the game in Viking, some went straight into the dressing room. Some were angry, some were sad, uh, but it was a split group. And. Um, after the day after we came home and uh, I took all the players together, I, I still felt that uh, this impact of the pressure is was really, really big in the club. And I felt that it was necessary for me to do something regarding the pressure, try uh, not to take it away because it, it can never happen, but try to live with the pressure and try to show them that we're in this together. It's not just a coach, the staff, one, two, three players here and some other ones in another direction, but we stay together. We win, we lose, we draw, we stay together. And also the staff, because I have a lot of staff members who have been successful in Sparta. Uh, we have uh, some who's won the championship a lot of times, 
uh, and they are also part of the history now and have to create the new history. So it doesn't help that uh, Barry is running around and saying he's got five championships. It doesn't help the new ones, the new players, because they will feel the pressure. So for me, it was important to create uh, uh, one group. And after the games, it uh, it was uh, also difficult due to TV and media stuff. That's, then I could wait maybe 20 minutes before I could talk to all the players. Then this was a chance for me to get everybody together on the pitch to show the players that we stay together. Whether we win, we lose, we draw, we stay together. We go as one group together to the fans. So if we go to the fans, we all go. We're all part of the, the game. Staff members, the one who's been there for a long time, the new staff members, we all go to the fans and show them that we're one team. We take all the, uh, the, uh, the praise when we win, but when we, uh, when we lose or we disappoint, we also take the stick and we take uh, the pyrotechnica and all this towards us. So it was also a signal mainly to the players that we're one team, we're one group, I will have your back anytime. Whether we win or lose, I will be there, we will be there and we all go. But hopefully it will also send a signal to all the fans that you guys can see that this group, they actually mean business. They mean Sparta. They will stay together. They will not go in one direction here and another one there and a third one will go there, whether we win or lose. These players will stay together. That's also why the players were not available for the game. The injured players is coming on the pitch to show, even though we did not play, we're with you guys, we go to the fans. And that was important for me to create uh, some seconds, some minutes where we uh, where we're together and we can uh, we can help each other with the pain or with the disappointment or hopefully with the with the praise that we also get. Okay, you mentioned the staff team. Uh, I think that's the almost brand new team to you. Yeah. Thomas Norgard is a newcomer to you. You have uh, never worked with each other, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, Lubos Lochka, another member, is uh, our I would say resident coach. Yeah. Uh, the goalkeepers coaches are ours. Yep. They are successful guys, they know Sparta and so yeah, on. Exactly. And uh, I would uh, like to ask, uh, how is the cooperation, cooperation working right now when the guys are new to you? I think it's really good. Uh, it's been quite easy actually to, to work with them. Um, of course, Thomas is the first time I work with him. I, I've been on some scouting trips with him for the Danish national team at, at one point, so I knew him a little bit, but he's, uh, he's a good coach and he's an open coach who um, who knows the business as well. So it's been quite easy for him to adapt as well. Uh, Lubos has been amazing in taking us all in, uh, showing us um, how Sparta works. He has been uh, easy to um, to work with when it comes to the set pieces. He's trying to improve. He's trying to, to do his best. He knows all the players. He knows the club inside out. Um, he knows the good things. He knows the less good things. So he's a very important uh, staff member to me as well. The goalkeeper coaches of City and Antichi is uh, unbelievable. I've never met goalkeeper coaches like these two. You're they freak, yeah. Uh, no, but they they work uh, they work like uh, crazy. They mm. work twelve uh, hours a day as a uh, at staff. They train the small kids, uh, eight years old, and all the way to the first team. They show an amazing culture, and and these guys are, are really really good people as well. Has a good mentality, a good spirit. Uh, Christian, of course, I knew from Michelin uh, was important to get him uh, here as well as we needed a, a physical coach who would um, implement the style of play that I would like, the intensity, and he, he knew exactly how I would like to train and how we would like to do it. And uh, and then I brought in Steven as well, who I knew from Antwerp, who who's amazing when it comes to um, analyzing the games, uh, data on the players. Uh, gathering all the information that we need, uh, recording all the sessions from from the trainings and putting it easy together for us as, as coaches to to work with the tools and also to help the players with the individual clips and stuff like this. So it's uh, it's a really good uh, good group. And then we got Barry in the background together with Yandis also who's helping uh, Steven. So it's a, I feel it's a, a solid uh, group of, uh, of people who um, who has the same aim which is to, to get success back to, to Sparta. Uh, we wanted to talk about Christian. Uh, was he a must-have for you? Could you, have, could you have imagined someone better on his place? Um, I'm not sure I could have imagined someone better. 
but he, he was definitely one that I really liked when uh, when it suddenly was an op opportunity for us to bring in a physical coach. It was not the purpose in the beginning that uh, that we should have him, but uh, but Ben decided to to stop, and then then I asked Thomas if it was possible to bring in uh, Christian. Yeah, if I remember right, he came a little bit later after you, Christian. Well, he no, he actually came. Yeah, well, uh, when it comes to the official uh, the announcement, yeah, exactly. It came a little bit later, but already when we mm -hmm. uh, when I came here, then it was almost settled that that uh, the Chris uh, was uh, was a possibility to to mm -hmm. get. So when you came into Sparta, you already had in mind like some some people on your team that you want to work together. Yeah, I I, I knew for sure I would bring Steven uh, in. Uh, he was important for me. He knows my style of play also and how I would like to to train and play. Uh, Thomas, for sure, I, I wanted to bring in an assistant also who who is good at the offensive play and also who's good at making the whole structure of, of the trainings as well. And then when I heard that, that Ben uh, wanted to go back home to England, then then it was a good opportunity for me to, to reach out for, for Christian. Maybe last question for this part, who's making most of the fun in the locker room <laughs> out of these guys? Uh, well, it's 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 very difficult to say. Uh, when it comes to the staff members, uh, you know, Stephen is always a good uh, good guy with a lot of fun. Uh, but the goalkeeper coaches, uh, it's bringing a good <laughs> good spirit as well. They, they, like I said, they're crazy people. Uh, they they work like like crazy, uh, looking at all the goalkeepers. Uh, I know not uh, CD. Um, not not a lot from Belgium, but he likes to speak Flemish also. So sometimes we speak in <laughs> Flemish, and, and he's he's just a, he's just a good man. So I think we we all add to the environment at at Starhof and and trying to bring our few things: uh, Danish mentality, English mentality, uh, also uh, also the Czech mentality is, is important for us. And it's also important for me that we don't bring in uh, a complete Danish staff. Because uh, then you will quickly get a, uh, a divided um, staff group, and that, that's also not nice. Uh, Christian also brought in uh, um, uh, Kirk from Scotland, who who's helping him as well, and we got Malas also. So there's a lot of good people with a different background, which I think it's important for us to perform, but also to develop all the time. Because it's important that every day we're together, we we do the same things, but it's also important that we think a little bit ahead. What can we do tomorrow, which is maybe working better? And there we got some really, really good people. A nyní se již přesuneme na naši novou platformu, kterou je Hero Hero. Všechny potřebné informace najdete přímo na Hero Hero, po případě na stránkách Spartanských novin. Partnerem tohoto vydání podcastu Spartanské noviny je Football Club, magazín pro fotbalovou kulturu.